Chapter 1 What's Wrong Here? I have been teaching God's Word since I was 19 years old. Over the years, I have seen the Word of God bring change in the lives of many people as well as my own life. Initially, we are often so excited about the Word and its impact, but we all have a tendency to gradually regress into our former habits by letting slip the Word's place of importance in our lives. For whatever reason, we do not stay plugged in to the truths of God. Perhaps we believe that these truths and experiences will carry us the rest of our lives, but they will not unless they are continually embraced and refreshed. Many years ago, before I accepted God's call into full-time ministry, I spent 14 years of my life working for my home state of Georgia as a psychologist, therapist, and counselor. During that time, I held the position of district director of mental health and mental retardation centers around the state. While in this capacity, I saw multitudes of people experiencing every imaginable kind of problem. I witnessed the devastation those problems caused in their lives and how hard it was for them to rebound to normalcy after facing those difficulties. But the thing that absolutely amazed me, and still does even today, is that, as a pastor, I saw the same patterns in the lives of saints that I saw in the world. I still see the same struggles and problems in the church that I saw outside the church years ago. As a whole, I do not see Christians rebounding any faster than those who do not have the spirit of the grace to assist them. To be frank, I often do not see any difference at all. And to me, that is a very sad thing. But how can this possibly be? We are Christians in the body of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit actually living within us. We have been raised up to sit with him in heavenly places. For us to be in the mess we're in, there must be something terribly wrong. We must be missing something that God has already provided for us, because Jesus' work on the cross is complete. There is nothing more that he must accomplish to defeat the devil. We are supposed to be victorious as members of God's elite family. There are thousands upon thousands of people who claim Jesus as Lord and Savior, but are not walking in the power of their salvation. We definitely are not enjoying all the benefits of our salvation, which Jesus shed his blood to purchase for us. Herein lies the problem. The Word of God and the blood of Jesus will bring us to a place of total victory. If the Bible is just a book, an everyday book that we are not really supposed to understand and are only supposed to read in church on Sunday morning, then let's face it, we are wasting our time. The Bible is God's Word, and it will accomplish what God sent it to do. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. We do not need to make things so complicated that only a handful of people are able to comprehend the simplicity of God's Word. We just need to say, this is what it says, this is what it means, and this is how it works. And then, with the help of the Almighty God, live by it. Victory. Let me tell you something. I enjoy my salvation. I enjoy being saved. I've been to hell and back a few times, and I can tell you the trip back is much better. Thank God for the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. He has set me free. Glory to God. I was a mess before Jesus got a hold of me. 
and I've even been a mess a few times since. But, praise God, the power of the blood of Jesus has changed my life from deep within. It did not happen overnight. Sometimes it took a little while for the blood to penetrate, to break through the hardness of unbelief and cleanse me. But eventually it did and brought me to victory. Thank God. It kept working as long as I kept putting it to work. But in truth, when I stopped, it stopped. We should be walking on a higher plane than the world. After all, we are supposed to be seated with Jesus in heavenly places. See Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. If we are not there, we are the ones who have moved, because according to God's word, that is where he has seated us. One of my greatest joys is to look out at a congregation and see people who, like myself, have walked the hard path in life, and despite all odds, have made it to a place of victory. I see those who have been in utter darkness, those to whom life has dealt harsh blows. I see those who were in the middle of a sea when the storm hit, and though the storm tried to take them under, they made it to the other side. I love to see God working in the lives of these people. They simply hear what they need to hear, do what they need to do, and God does the rest. God is always faithful. Hope Just by living in this crazy world, it is easy to find ourselves in a mess, in a pit with no apparent way out. We normally do not have to go looking very far for trouble. It is highly adept at putting us in its crosshairs. But hope can begin to flicker deep within us when we embrace the word of our God. Hope not only of escaping the trouble, but hope that God really does not leave us nor forsake us. What a fabulous truth that is. Being a Christian should be synonymous with victory, no matter the source of the trouble. I have found myself in places when I thought he left me. Have you ever been to that lonesome place where you thought even God had given up on you? Of course he does not leave us, but it sure feels that way sometimes, doesn't it? We just get so caught up in the situations and circumstances we are facing that we wind up blocking his actions. Believe me, we have all done it a million times. But one word from God, one word that pierces our hearts, can change our lives in an instant. There should never be hopelessness in God's people, but sadly, I see it all too often. The problem is, we tend to see things as impossible. God never sees impossible. Today, looking at the headlines of our newspapers, being called a Christian means little. The name is thrown about all too casually. But in my view, if we are going to be called Christian, after our Lord Jesus, we need to live like him. It makes no sense for us to go around talking about victory, but not having any real victories in our lives. We have to walk this thing out and be the lights in the dark places of this world. Glory to God, we can do it. The early Christians certainly lived out their lives with great faith and godliness. Their presence had a tremendous impact on the civilization of their day. The Christ-likeness of the new birth was evident and real to them. Their relationship with Jesus was so real to them that everything about them changed. They were overcomers who lived out their faith in such perfection that everybody was either for them or against them. There was no middle ground. 
It was very difficult being a Christian back then. We act like it's worse now, but in truth, thousands were killed then just for being faithful to God. They lived persecuted lives, yet the Bible said they turned the world upside down for Christ. See Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Why is it that in today's world Christians have not been able to make a similar impact and cause the eyes of the world to gaze on this life-changing Jesus within us? Be assured, every victory is always wrapped up in the blood of the Lamb. In this book, we will press deeper into that immeasurable truth. Praise God! Precious and Holy The blood of Jesus is precious and holy in the sight of the Almighty God. After all, it was the sacrifice and death of His beloved Son on the cross at Calvary that saved us all, every man, woman, and child, from destruction. Once we have learned that, we have the assurance that we can come quickly before the throne, ask forgiveness for our sins, receive that forgiveness, and walk in it. His blood is the key to our wonderful salvation, and we must embrace it and esteem the blood with honor. It has the power to bridge the chasm and reconcile unholy people with a holy God. The blood of Jesus draws us nigh unto Him and invites us into the household of God as sons and daughters. What a privilege! Glory to His name forever! The blood enables God to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is certainly a true and exciting reality for us. But there is another aspect of the cleansing power of the blood that I have not heard discussed much. When the Lord first uncovered this revelation to me, I began remembering crises in my own life through which I had successfully passed. And I discovered with joy that the Lord had been leading me down this pathway a great many years, although I was not consciously aware of it. Isn't it interesting how we can know things in our spirit before we know them in our heads? God's mercy is beyond our comprehension. He is absolutely wonderful. As I began to teach my church these principles, and they begin to grasp them and apply them to their own lives, this revelation brought about more change in the hearts of the people than anything I have ever taught. I had never seen so many positive changes take place so fast. It was absolutely astounding. There were so many turnarounds in family situations, turnarounds that actually lasted. Do you know what I mean? We can have turnarounds today, but then tomorrow go back the other way. The changes I have witnessed in the lives of people have kept them going the right way since this teaching of the blood of Jesus has come forth. It has been amazing. As a matter of fact, we took a two-week period and did a quick test. We learned how to use the blood of Jesus as a priest and apply that precious blood of the Lamb to situations that were messed up, and to people who did not know the Lord. Out of the approximately 100 people who had participated in this test, approximately 70% of them saw positive results in that short period of time. Some of these situations and people have been prayed for over years and years, yet in a two-week time period, People saw God change them. Glory! So, do I have your interest now? Great. Then let's get started, shall we?